What's up, everybody? And today we are reacting to how Putin went from KGB spy to president of Russia. I don't actually know much about Putin himself, apart from him being, you know, obsessed with wanting Ukraine to be part of the old Soviet Union and bring it back. But that's pretty much all I know about Putin. So I thought this was a great video. It's the infographic show. They're fantastic, as always. They do incredible videos. I will leave a link down below to the OG video. Make sure you go down there. Give it a good like and subscribe and all that good stuff. We'll be back later on this week with some more invasion updates. Hopefully we can get some more information about it. I'm sorry, there's a large truck going past. He's done. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we get some more good news out of it, which I doubt we will, but I'm hoping we do, as we all are hoping. Um, and then later on in the week as well, we're getting some Halo again, which will be real nice. Uh, but before we get started, question of the day. Matthew Van Patten asks, question, what do you think about the people around the world coming into Ukraine and fighting? I'm guessing you're saying. Um, there's multiple ways you can look at this, right? I commend these people who are like, I am going to go and help them. Like, hats off to you. I wouldn't do it. I've got a family. My priority out of everything else in the world is to look after my family. My two children and my wife. That's my priority. It always will be. It always is going to be. It always it has been, right? Um, My only thing is, say, like, there was, like, some UK... We talked about this, about the UK soldiers that was going off and uh, fighting. They went AWOL and went to fight. That can be taken out of context by Russia. You know they love to find anything, nitpick, and be like, all right, that's why you, the UK are fighting. If they find that UK citizens or UK soldiers are fighting Russia, then they're going to use that to bolster their argument that the West is bad and that the UK are bad. Do you get what I'm saying? So I get that they're doing this. I totally understand it. If I was, um, wasn't a parent, I wasn't a husband, and I had nothing else to lose, I would go and help. I really would um but i do have a family so no but yeah it can be taken out of context and that's like my biggest worry out of it um if you want your question answered leave it in the comment section down below and i will certainly get to that into a in an in a in a soon video soon to be video i can't talk today guys i'm tired kids kept me up all night what else happened that was pretty much it stayed up late kids kept me up i'm tired Anyway, let's get on to this video about why uh, Putin went from a KGB... Hey, 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 just, just you wait. KGB to president of Russia. Here we go. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, ex-KGB agent and current president of Russia. Mm -hmm. He's a man of great power and a ruthless man who will do anything to ensure he remains in power as the head of the Russian government, possibly even murder hundreds of his own people. I'm sure we're well aware of the extent of what Putin will do to keep his power. Power is everything, isn't it? Like, people will do anything for power, and it's kind of annoying how much people want power. <laughs> like, can't they just be happy? I guess it's human nature, right? It's been said that Russia is not a failing democracy, but rather a successful autocracy. And Vladimir Putin is at the reins of the world's most powerful autocratic state. Yeah. Under his watch, hundreds of Russians have been murdered, political opponents jailed, and whistleblowers assassinated. Yeah. While the pockets of organized crime and major political figures have been enriched greatly, to the point that Russia now has one of the world's greatest wealth inequalities amongst industrialized nations. Yeah. Putin grew up in a small apartment in then Leningrad, today St. Petersburg. His family was working class, which in the Soviet Union made them very poor. From his earliest years, Putin is fond of retelling one particular story. Once, he and his mother had cornered a rat, and knowing it was cornered, the rat became vicious and extremely dangerous. It's a fitting story for a man who has clawed his way out of many corners in his life. When he was about 17... Do you think this, do you think this rat story is true? Do you think Putin is just saying this? I don't know. He seems to have worked his way up, which is commendable. But he's also some, done some pretty horrific things, hasn't he? Putin approached the local KGB desk and asked to join. He was told to return when he was older. And so Putin enrolled in Leningrad State University to pursue a law degree. And there he met Anatoly Sobchak, who was at the time an assistant professor teaching business law. The two would make an impression on each other, and Sobchak would later be instrumental in creating the Putin we know today. Putin, for his part, would be instrumental in keeping Sobchak out of life imprisonment. In 1975, Putin joined the KGB. So he's basically helping his friends. That's what he did. KGB, and was sent for training at the 401st KGB school in Okta, Leningrad. After training, he worked in the 2nd Chief Directorate, undertaking counterintelligence operations, and was eventually transferred to the 1st Chief Directorate, where he would be tasked with monitoring foreign officials in Leningrad. For the KGB, this meant not just keeping tabs on potential spies, 
but also running surveillance and discovering any potential opportunities for blackmail or exploitation. Okay, so he's definitely kind of worked his way up, which is which is impressive. It's commendable and impressive. Like, he's gone from the very bottom, but he's also always wanted to do this and he's had a drive to do that, which I understand because when I was really young, I really wanted to be in the Royal Marines and I had a big drive for that before I was even old enough to be in the Royal Marines. So I get that. Still, still a bad person. This is likely where Putin gained his infamous ability to read individuals, with many of his supporters and critics alike confirming that the man has an uncanny ability to discern an individual's true motives. Mm. This is also what made him a successful intelligence agent, and Putin was soon sent to the front line in the US-Soviet intelligence war, East Germany. Putin would serve in Dresden from 1985 to 1990, gradually growing more and more disillusioned with the state of affairs in the Soviet Union, and hardening his attitude toward the West, whom he saw as responsible for the decline of the Soviet state. Very little is known about Putin's exact activities during this time period, but many former terror group members and intelligence agents from both Russia and Western nations have come forward with various claims. It's widely believed that Putin had a direct role in contact and arming terrorist groups that the Soviet Union saw as useful, such wow. as the Red Army faction and various neo-Nazi movements. Putin was believed to be responsible for coordinating some of their activities and even providing funding or equipment. Wow. His knack for developing contacts with the criminal underground would serve him very well when the Soviet Union began to fall apart around him. So he's been, he's always been a stereotypical bad guy, like from the movies. <laughs> like, legitimately, he's always been a, stereo, a, stereo, a stereotypical bad guy. In 1990, as the East German Communist government fell, Putin returned to Leningrad to work with the International Affairs section of Leningrad State University. While there, he surveilled the student body for any signs of dissident activity, while also looking for potential KGB recruits. His return to Leningrad also afforded him the opportunity to reconnect with former professor Anatoly Sobchak, a relationship which soon would blossom into a full-fledged criminal partnership. Of course. The 1990 of course, because what other bad guy would do? What, what, what else would a bad guy do, right? He literally is going like the James Bond villain route of life, isn't it? <laughs> One coup against Mikhail Gorbachev played out, Putin saw where the chips were landing and resigned from the KGB. In 1991, Putin became head of the Committee for External Relations of the Mayor's Office, a position he gained through his relationship with Anatoly Sobchak, Interesting. who became St. Petersburg's first democratically elected mayor. Almost immediately, allegations of corruption began to crop up against Putin and his master Sobchak, as claimed by investigative journalists and police and federal investigators, who were all later silenced in one fashion or another. Of course they were. Of course they were. Because what else would a bad guy do when they get criticized? Putin had used his old KGB tricks to make contacts with the criminal underworld. St. Petersburg at the time was known as the mafia capital of Russia. Wow. No mayor could rule the city without organized crimes approval. It's not known how many millions Putin helped Sobchak embezzle from the city. But one investigation discovered that Putin had been responsible for the exchange of $93 million in medals for food aid from the West. Wow. The promised food never arrived in any significant quantity. It's believed that the food was funneled directly to the underground markets popular throughout Russia during this time, with Putin, Sobchak, and organized crime all enriching their pockets. The investigation into the missing food aid ended with a recommendation that Putin be immediately fired, but Sobchak summarily ignored it. Of course he did. Of course he did. Like, this couldn't be any more evil, right? Like, I commend his ability to work out from, you know, a really poor family all the way up to his position of what he did. But he literally was evil, like, the whole way through it. Like, literally. How has this guy not been stopped before he was even president? Unbelievable. Sobchak's corruption became too much for St. Petersburg to stomach, and he lost his re-election campaign in 1996. With pressure mounting to arrest Sobchak and try him for corruption, Putin helped Sobchak orchestrate a stunt involving his alleged failing health delaying any potential court proceedings. Sobchak arranged for medical treatment in Paris and left Russia with no return passport. Upon landing in Paris, Sobchak did not check into the hospital or seek treatment, instead living in exile until his old friend Vladimir Putin became powerful enough to invite him back home and pressure authorities to drop the charges against him. Wow. With his fierce loyalty to the corrupt Sobchak and his engineering of Sobchak's evasion of criminal charges, however, immediately caught the attention of then-President Boris Yeltsin. Yeltsin had himself caught the attention of a growing number of federal prosecutors as criminal scheme after criminal scheme was uncovered within Yeltsin's inner circle, while the Russian people... It's just, it makes you wonder how this, all this corruption was able to fly by. I mean, there's a lot of corruption in the US politics. We all are well aware of that. There isn't this much though, or maybe there is this much corruption. It's just not as blatantly in your face. 
Does that make sense? Like, in the US, there's a lot of corruption. A lot of it. But it's all behind, hush, hush, closed doors. You have to read the fine print to realize what's going on. Whereas this is, this is all just so upfront, but they just don't give a shit. They're just like, all right, whatever. It's unbelievable that this is allowed to happen. People struggled with skyrocketing wealth inequality. Yeltsin had used his presidency to greatly enrich himself and a growing number of wealthy oligarchs, whose loyalty in turn fueled Yeltsin's political power. Yeltsin's presidency was winding down, and he needed an ace in the hole to make sure he stayed out of prison. Vladimir Putin would be that ace. Seeing his display of loyalty to Somchak, Yeltsin invited Putin to Moscow, and within two years was appointed Prime Minister of the Russian Federation. Upon his appointment, Yeltsin also commented that he wished to see Putin become a successor. Wow. There was just one problem. Nobody knew who Putin was. With a complete unknown in contention for the presidency, Yeltsin's opponents knew they had all but clenched the presidency for themselves. They never counted on just how many Russian lives Putin was willing to sacrifice to seize power. Yeah. In September 1999, a series of bombings struck the city of Boynaksk, Moscow. I think it goes down to the fact that he is a really smart guy. Like, he is a very, very smart guy. It's just so blatantly corrupt. The guy's smart. You can't deny it. Yeah. And Volga Dosink. The attacks were carried out by Chechen terrorists and killed 300 innocent Russians. Unbelievable. While over a thousand more. The entire country was shocked by the violence of the attacks, and the Russian people became terrified as the targets had all been apartment buildings. Any one of them could be next. <sighs> Vladimir Putin, Russia's prime minister, swore vengeance on the perpetrators, and soon the Russian intelligence services had pinned the attacks on Chechen terrorists. The Russian military mobilized, and the second Chechen war was on. Vladimir Putin's tough stance and even tougher actions soon made him a national hero. Yeah, that makes sense. It was inevitably his to win. There was just one problem. The attacks were almost certainly either fully or in large part a Russian false flag operation. After the main wave of attacks, another explosive was located on the 22nd of September. Could you could you not like realize that? Of course it was a false flag. It's, it's so stereotypical evil and so blatantly obvious. I don't understand how this was allowed to happen. I really don't. I guess back then, you're looking at 1996, did it say? The, the internet was still relatively young and the flow of information wasn't anywhere near as accessible as what it is right now. So maybe that's probably the big reason as for it. By a resident of an apartment building in Ryazan, the witnesses noticed two suspicious men carrying sacks into the basement from a car with the car's license plate being registered in Moscow, but with a sheet of paper covering the last two digits. The police discovered three sacks of white powder in the basement with a detonator and timing device attached to the sacks. After the bomb squad defused the explosives, the police officers would state that the detonator was of professional grade. Yeah. Even more damning was the fact that the explosive discovered would turn out to be the same type of explosive used by the Russian military. Mm. Putin's government would go on to deny any involvement in the plot, and yet numerous investigations carried out by both foreign and Russian intelligence agencies would all refuse to release their findings. Even Boss. more damning is the fact that many journalists and investigators looking into the bombings Killed. in the years to come would end up dead. In two what? <laughs> really? Really? 2003, U.S. Senator John McCain warned Congress that there remain credible allegations that Russia's Federal Security Service had a hand in carrying out these attacks. Alexander Litvinenko, a former KGB officer, would go public with his allegations that Putin had in fact ordered the apartment building attacks, amongst other charges of crimes and corruption of the by now president of the Russian Federation. Wow. Litvinenko would end up dead, poisoned in London with a radioactive substance by two yep. Russian intelligence agents. That was massive all over the news. In the end, despite much of the Russian population believing the government had something to do with the attacks, the immediate effect was just as Putin had planned. His stirring leadership and tough guy stance against the Chechen people would spur him into Russia's highest office. Yep. While there, he would work to change presidential term limits while consolidating his political power. He briefly stepped down from the presidency to become prime minister again in 2008, only to ascend to power a third time in 2012. In 2021, Nuts. Putin signed into law an expansion to Russian presidential term limits, giving him two more chances to run and potentially putting him in power until 2036. Within Isn't that nuts? He just wants to run the country till he dies. I think he'll die before then personally, but wow. Any major political opponent frequently being intimidated, killed, or simply arrested for any number of trumped up charges, Putin is set to remain in power as Russia's most successful dictator since Joseph Stalin. That's nuts. Putin's key to power has been consolidating his political base by forcing out any potential rivals. Yeah. He's closely worked with contacts in the organized crime world to intimidate, harass, and even murder any potential opponents who don't fall in line. And reporters in Russia who dig too deep 
into Putin's presidency often find themselves imprisoned under false charges or simply killed. Briefly in the 2000s, Russia was considered one of the most dangerous places for an independent journalist to operate. Since then, the only thing that's changed is fewer reporters are left who are willing to risk their lives or freedom to tackle Putin's corruption. That's crazy. To placate the Russian people and garner support, Putin has a long stock to his tough guy persona. A favorite tactic of his are ridiculous propaganda-style photo shoots where he's depicted as a tough, manly man who engages in sports from like the shirtless riding a horse when we've all seen hockey, it. Hockey to fishing shirtless <laughs> to riding horses, also shirtless, and maintaining a physical fitness regime even at the age of 69. A man of many talents, though, Putin is also frequently shown to have an intellectual side, with photos depicting him joining an underwater archaeological expedition and being a man of action and adventure as he drives a Formula One race car. However, what Putin most wants is the Russian people to know that he's a man of heart as well, as he hosts a tea party for a little girl with cancer and helps conduct research into polar bears. Then there's that time that Putin rode a weasel that was riding a woodpecker. <laughs> by all accounts, Putin is so beloved by the Russian people that he's the only world leader with his own music video. With I don't think he's necessarily loved by the people of Russia. I think they... A forced, is forced love. Women clamoring for their own man like Putin. The truth is, though, it's all propaganda. Made yeah. To keep Putin in power. Now it go is. check out a day in the life of Putin. Or wow, I knew it was corrupt, but I didn't know it was that corrupt. Like obviously, like I said, there's corruption all over the world, but it's so in your face and blatant when it comes to Vladimir Putin and Russia. Like it's so blatantly, obviously corrupt. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Everyone who opposes him goes to jail. Everyone. Poisoned. Killed. Jailed. Silenced in every single way possible. Every single time someone opposes Putin. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. And the fact that this was able to go on is just mind-boggling. It really is. It really is. It's interesting to see this side of, of him because obviously we all see what the media says, but what was his actual upbringing? I didn't know. Um, again, I, I think he needs to be taken out of power as soon as possible, guys. And I hope Ukraine do it. I really do. Members, you're beautiful, you're amazing, I love you. I couldn't do this without you. Couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these members. Scrolling across the screen right here. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, links down below to the OG video as well as a bunch of other links to uh, my social media, my merch, everything. Check it out. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.